Are there things we can do to keep looking young? Are there things we can do to slow down the aging process? That's what we'll find out on the show. My name is Patience Eloy Abba, and this is We Can Deal, your favorite weekend show. Atama, slowing down the aging process. You, but <laughs> want to say it nicely, we'll say we're slowing down the biological, biological clock. clock. <laughs> oh. Can that really happen, I wonder sometimes? Is it possible to slow it down? Oh, yeah. You know, we have the chronological age, that is the number. Number. Then and we have then... the biological, and that's how your aging from inside out. Oh, like yes. when I smiled at you this morning, <laughs> you said, Thelma, weather smile, the yeah. world of this day. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we can say that age is nothing but, but a, a number. number. Yeah. If it is possible to slow it down, we can bring in exercise, healthy eating, so many things. rest, relaxation, peace of mind. True. And the world is not giving it to you. You better snatch it and keep it for yourself. For yourself. Like you always say, patience. <laughs> Welcome to Weekend Dealing Day. My name is Thelma Obaz. We often say that age is just a number. We are referring to the figure, whether it's 10, 20, 30, 40. Oftentimes, we also add that 50 is the new 25. And what happens when you want to age gracefully is you start the work from the inside and it gradually shows on the outside. There are many areas you can focus on. But let's let Francis tell us what he found in his research as we set the tone for a conversation with his background feature, slowing down the biological clock. Being old is not just being old. You need to enjoy your old age. That's what we're talking about. And that's aging gracefully, so to speak. That you're growing old doesn't mean you should not be exercising. In fact, that's when you need to really exercise to oil the joints and all that. So you must entertain yourself in a way that regular exercise will be entertainment, not punishment. <laughs> uh, so exercise in groups, so you take a walk, a brisk walk for minimum of 30 minutes every day or every other day at least. We discovered that most times once someone is aging, the person stops exercising. But the people that require exercises most are the elderly. So we need to kind of make sure we pass the information so that the, everybody will know not to exercise when you are young and when you are now getting old, you stop exercising. You need to ask yourself a question, why is it that most times when someone retires, if you see the person the next two or three years, notice a drastic deterioration in the aging process. Because every day the person is no more carrying out the normal daily task to enjoy carry out. Most times they are sedentary, sitting down one place without doing another thing. So these are the things that mount that affect the body system in terms of deterioration, in terms of aging. Doing the right exercises it slows down your aging process. <laughs> people to eat a very balanced diet and this is also predicated to the fact that as you old most non-communicable diseases might start showing up diseases like hypertension diseases like diabetes and of course arthritis uh, so when that happens that you are now advised to change your diet when it comes to uh, aging there are some food that might be good for Mr. A that might not be good for Mr. B. So most of the times, as physiotherapists, we usually recommend the person should see the dietitian. In aging, you wouldn't say because you're old, you isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. This is the time 
you even register in some clubs. At least in Abuja, I have some older people who feel they have gone this thing. They go to IBB club every evening, they go there to interact with other people. You register in other clubs, you belong to self care projects. Remember, it's not about you anymore, it's about you and also mostly your environment. You volunteer for things, anything that will take you out of your, your environment. Socialization is very, very important to, in slowing down the aging process. One, the person needs to understand, yes, you accept they're getting old. But you need to kind of find a way to make sure you keep yourself happy, you interact with people, which will help to slow down both psychological aging and biological aging. If there is any time your body needs rest, it's old age when you're getting old. The reason is that your body doesn't have the ability to regenerate easily in the last compared to when you're young. And the most important components in the act of resting is sleep. If you say somebody must sleep eight hours a day, somebody aging must underline that must if you want to have a balance. Because it's during sleep that your body recalibrates itself. Many times you sleep very well and wake up in the morning, you stretch your hand, you feel good. Anytime you don't sleep well at night, when you wake up, you're drowsy, you're feeling unhappy. That should not happen when you are aging, when you are getting to your old age. Most people dread old age. You know why? People that are highly independent they do things for themselves. So you don't want a situation where, first of all, they can't stand up, they have to be wheeled around in a wheelchair because arthritis have dealt with them, or they have a heart condition, or they have chronic non-infective diseases because they didn't pay attention and then have a, a, a complication. Aging starts right from when you are born. They have started aging immediately. So if they are scared that they will age, sorry for them, they are already aging. But aging is a good thing, especially when you are aging healthy. Weekend Deal Today is captioned, slowing down the biological clock. Weekend Deal! Indeed, aging is a beautiful thing, but people want to age gracefully. What that means is that, like I said earlier, the numbers are increasing, but you're looking good. Now, if you want to achieve that, what can you do? What lifestyle modification are you carrying out? Let's go to NTA Porter Court where they have this covered. Let's learn more. Inspection! How are you, Tisha Namara? You look so good, yeah. young, fresh. What's happening? Thank you. It's evident oh, of good living. I can see. Now you can say that again. Yes. And I look like you look so you. good. Yes. See your skin. I, I eat healthy. Yes. Have you ever met someone who looks and acts like they're actually younger than they really are? Why is this? Looking at Mr. Namdi Ezequem, one would think he is younger, but he has just clocked and retired at 60. Maintaining healthy lifestyle habits such as regular physical activities, nutritious dieting, daily exposure to sunlight and skin care, stress management as well as moderating certain habits can help slow the aging process, says functional medical experts and lifestyle coaches. Aging is something that is very inevitable. It's a process that we, everybody must pass through. But there are some things we are going to look at that can slow down aging. One is balanced diet. When you eat a balanced diet, it tends to help you to um, lower or shorten the way you age. There is something that is in our makeup called telemas. They are part of the chromosome. The longer the telemas, the, lo the healthier and also the younger we look. So there are some, some of the food that we eat that help to influence these telemas. 
when we talk about adequate diet, we are talking about a diet that is rich in all the nutrients. So we are talking about whole grain, unprocessed food, healthy fats, and a lot of fruits and vegetables. When we eat healthy like this, we tend to look much, much younger than our age. Smoking, in fact, nicotine, affects virtually every cell in the body. It's a fact. And the excess intake of uh, these uh, cigarettes and the, the life of a cigar directly affects your tissues and uh, vital organs. Moderate alcohol intake could be nutritious, but when you have excess intake and habits, definitely it degenerates the vital organs from the brain to the kidneys and the other vital organs. So invariably you see that they affect the normal trend in life and also uh, will uh, uh, potentiate aging. That exposure to polluted, degraded environments is a precursor to early aging. Gas flared can remain in the atmosphere for more than 20, 30 years. Studies have shown that, and as they are there, they are being inhaled by human beings, you and I. And sometimes because we do not know how to address the challenges arising from inhaled gas. There are some kind of skin products you use and you discover that I'm really getting old. Most people deal on chemicals in production. I produce my products, I don't use chemicals. I use natural fruits. Fruits like cucumber, carrots, tomatoes. And why those chemicals you use them today and tomorrow you are fair, very fair, and you'll be happy. You just discover in four to five weeks, a month, two months, you start discovering some changes about your body. So people to cause stretch mark, to cause aging, to cause wrinkles, to cause different reactions. Having a, enough time to sleep, but the, the, the best out of all these things, we must cultivate the attitude of prayer. It is imperative to adopt healthy lifestyle choices in order to age gracefully. Sometimes lifestyle choices mean lifestyle change. If you're not making the right lifestyle choices, now is the time to really set the tone for your life as you're living it, as we speak. We're talking about slowing down the biological clock. And Debbie Oku Okokon is going to be taking us down a very interesting path as she's a trained medical esthetician and a medical spa expert. Thank you. Well, thank Those you for having me here. so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm glad to be on the show this morning. <coughs> it's great to have you. Yeah. When we talk about um, aesthetics, aesthetics, we're talking about the body, the outer part. Yeah. So um, the aesthetic is the body. And, um, for someone like me, it's more like the body, both internal and external. Okay. So okay. it's not just the outward, because whatever you do on the outward, you need to start from the inside. Interesting conversation. Yeah. So perhaps we're talking about um, slowing down a biological clock which is the tone for today. Many people over the world, women, men, they know that age will come. It's already there. From the day you're born, you start to age. But they want to look good. And we often use the term aging gracefully. Nice one, in, out. What is the way to hit the ground running if already we're not doing it? Okay, so um, for aging, uh, what I tell people is you need to first and foremost understand how this aging takes place. Uh, we are discussing about the biological aging. So the biological aging is when one starts getting older, there are certain things that plays underneath the skin. So you start having changes in the bone structure of the face, you start having um, muscle weakening, you start having depletion of collagen and elastin fiber, and then you start having the shrinking of the deep tissue fats and the drooping of the superficial fat. So you, uh, looking at it, you discover that there are things that plays underneath the skin that actually makes one age. So why you need to understand this, it's very important because that's what will also help you to know exactly what to do on how to look younger. So paraventure, you've started exhibiting the 
aging yeah, science yeah, science and all of that already yeah mm -hmm. so you now look at it where, what exactly is aging on your face is it the drooping of the face or is it just collagen depletion or is it that the muscles are weakened so when you know what exactly is aging on your skin you know the right approach to adopt in order to okay, control how do you it. know how do i know if it's collagen or the drooping or these things you just mentioned how do i know what's the okay. first step to finding out okay so if you're looking at the collagen um the basically patient. you notice that your face starts getting wrinkled mm -hmm. or your skin starts getting wrinkled if you have poor production of keratin production on your skin your skin start thinning out sorry carrot, so that thing in um, carrots we have it in carrots too. it's no, one of the vitamins the cells the cells one of the cells in the epidermal this outer structure is called keratinocytes mm -hmm. yeah, but they say when you take carrot you can get it it helps to build it up okay so it helps build, build it up the skin. i need to say that okay. so that people yes. know that i can buy my carrots and <laughs> you can use your carrot oil <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so you can use okay. your carrot oil okay so now if your skin is getting you know thin and dry and um, you have probably barrier mantle impairment what you start using is something that will build it up right so if you notice that it's getting too thin you need to start using product that will help to build up, to build it up. the skin because that means that the keratin production keratinocyte production is depleting Depleated. so it start getting thinner and then you start having like skin sensitivity so you need to build it up now if you're looking at your face and you discover that your your face your deep fat has moved and the face is already drooping and sagging to form a jaw around this area what you now have to start doing is use products that will aid in firming up, up. Yes, we do lifting and firming up the face. We do know that um, uh, sometimes you ought not to wait until you see those signs. Some people say you can start to plan for the future, even in your 20s, because the aging process is inevitable. So if you start earlier on, perhaps the, these things we're discussing, do we not push them back? Or when they come, they come in a way that you still look uh, nice. Okay, so um, I'm a great supporter of the fact that you need to start young, um, early enough to start taking care of your skin. So um, if you start taking care of your skin in your 20s, it's the best time ever. ever. So depending on what you're going to use, so that's mm -hmm. when you meet a professional that places you on product. Because you're not supposed to use everything, uh -huh. right? So whatever products you're meant to use in your 40s shouldn't mm -hmm. be the same with what you're using in your 20s. 20s. Because your 20s, everything is still being produced. Your mm -hmm. collagen is still being produced, you know. Um, the lasting fiber is still active. Your muscles are still active and all of that. So all you're doing at this point is maintenance. So you're just using something to maintain. And when you maintain, you also reduce the speed at which, which you, you age, actually you age. age. You know, but if you've actually, um, if you're already experiencing the aging, now you're going to use and do things that will aid you because it's already showing. Do you understand? Mm, yes. So what you do at this point is something that will really aid. Corrective. More like a corrective More measure. like a corrective. Yeah. Okay, now what's the place of um, supplements? People say, because you said something about inside, we've been talking about from inside out. And people say supplements, you have to take supplements if you're a woman of a certain age, especially. What's your take on that? Or the food we're eating, a natural balanced diet is enough. Okay, so um, supplements is very important. Now, the balanced diet we eat is also very, very important. Like, you can't do without it. But unfortunately, I would say that getting the right organic food, it's also a problem. And um, the amount of this food you need to eat or those veggies that you need to take that will be enough to supplement everything that you need in your body. The amount is quite large, right? And you know, these days everybody tries to eat a very little meal here and there just oh. to keep themselves going and all. So taking supplements is very important. And then there's some of these vitamins that we really can eat them. We just need to buy them and take. So I support that people should take supplements. I feel we should take supplements. Oh. And um, for anti-aging, um, there are supplements that you can actually take that will aid that. Especially if you are already having, because when you're getting older, there's also low production of hyaluronic acid in the body. Yeah. You know, so what, that's, is that? uh, what is that in layman's terms? Okay, so hyaluronic acid, it's more like a moisture binding 
you know, molecules that helps bind moisture into the skin, right? And also it helps in the internal body, helps with um, more like a lubrication for our bones Most. and all of that, the movement of it and all. So when you're getting older, the body produces less of this hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. And when you have less of the hyaluronic acid, that's the thing that causes dehydration because there's no hydration. If you apply hyaluronic acid on your face, it binds moisture 1000 times to the skin. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes the skin look supple. If you don't have it, you see the lines and the creases already forming on the face and on the skin. So when you take supplement, it also aids in the production of this hyaluronic acid. It's in the production of collagen. It's in the production of elastin fiber, you know, in the body. So, and it also helps with the vitamins that are being produced or with the enough vitamins that you have in the body. It helps fight free radicals inside the body. And that prevents things like oxidative stress that we have, uh -huh. you know. So, because these are the things that actually makes us age faster. Age faster, stress. Stress, stress. makes us age faster. Which is irregular in Nigeria. I mean, it's so, constant. But, yes, so, so but taking supplements key, is, isn't it? Is, is very important. Mm. But water, talking about moisture, oughtn't we to increase the amount of water we take? Water is very important. <laughs> you can't overlook water. When we're younger, we can take like one bottle, you know, one liter. But we're told as we grow older, we need to go like three, four liters per day? Yes, we need it. Um, taking up to three, four liters. Four liters, yeah, more like maximum. But if you can do two liters, two, three liters in a day, it's very okay. It's fine. So, yeah, because we need the water for our body to function very well. Okay. So where is the place of spa services? Let's say a good body scrub. What would that do for me if I'm aging and I want to rejuvenate the way I look? What kind of body scrub or what is the place of body scrub in that process? Okay, so body scrub basically is to help um, exfoliate the skin and remove dead cells. So there's something we call discrimination. So when you're in your 20s, the body can discriminate easily. So what that means is it sheds off the dead cells. The way snakes remove their cell, cell, um, skin cells, right? So the body does that. But as you get older, you discover that the lipids that binds the skin gets tighter. So because of that, you find it very difficult to discriminate, right? And that can cause aging, making you look older. Yeah. So when you scrub, you're removing the dead cells to remove, to reveal a more youthful complexion and a youthful look. And when you scrub, you stimulate n new cells to be produced. Okay. Remember, as you're getting older, the production of cells yes. reduces. But when you scrub, it causes new cells to be produced. How many times well, should they, sorry, okay. sorry, still on the scrub. Mm. How many times should one scrub in a month or in a year? Mm. Okay, so we always advise that uh, you can do the professional scrub once a month. Then if you just want to help do something very mild at home once a week. Why? Because you go out every day and your body, you know, get in contact with hazards that settles on the skin and get stuck in the pores of the skin every day. So once a week in the house, you can easily just scrub off the dead cells. But if you want it to be done professionally once a month, it's okay. Sometimes um, there are other treatments we can get in the spa beyond the one for the body. What else can we do with us? We won't talk about spa. Are we just going for the body scrub? Okay, so um, spa has so much to offer these days. It's not just about body scrub. Spa has a way of redefining you and just changing everything about you and enhancing your look, right? So that's where the medical spa comes in because this is where advanced modalities are done. So let's take, for example, you come in and you're all worried about your look because you feel that, oh, I'm in my 40s and already I'm already exhibiting the extrinsic aging because we have the extrinsic and the intrinsic. So, and then you're worried about the extrinsic, extrinsic is out. Yeah, so the extrinsic aging basically are the factors around that, you know, fasten your aging process. So you're not aging biologically the way you're supposed to, to age. age. So things that things you come in contact with, it's, there are some hazards you come in contact with or drugs mm -hmm. that ages you. So you just start looking older overnight. But that's not how, that's like you're in your 40s and you're really looking like you're in your late 50s mm. because of some things or environment that you're exposed to that is aging you. So peradventure you come in with that kind of look, your face is already drooping, your eyes are already enlarged, you have um, 
bags. bags underneath your eyes. You have the sagging jaw. So when you come in, advanced procedures are being done on you. So uh, light therapies can be adopted. Maybe laser procedures can be done. Fillers, Botox can be done to enhance the facial look. Fractional skin tightening can also be done to tighten um, the skin, the tissue of the skin, and give you that lifted look. So it's not just about the body, but you know, you can do a whole lot. You can do a whole lot. Oh, here's that Botox. Talking about Botox, it freezes the face in such a way that your emotions, you can't smile. It just, we hear that it's, it has its own side effects. So I, I, I watched it. No, no, honestly, okay. <laughs> I saw a movie where somebody went for Botox and mm -hmm. then he went for a condolence visit. He was smiling. I think he had smiled just before mm. he had the Botox. And the, it froze there. He went to condole somebody. And he looked at though He was smiling. Real life? Yeah. No, it's, it's a movie. Okay, it's no. a movie. It's a movie. But just to okay, say that so these things can happen. I don't want any yeah. expression being frozen okay. on my face. Okay. So basically, the whole Botox thing, there's a misconception. You're just relaxing the muscles, right? Okay. The active muscles. Mm. So when you look at the person's face and you discover that there are active muscles on the person's face that is, you know, causing them or making them look wrinkled or making them look quite old what you're doing is you're just relaxing those muscles and you don't overdo it so you do it in such a way that the person still looks very natural so even when she's laughing even when he's laughing you know men do get botox right yeah. yes. so even if you're laughing or whatever you still look natural, still look natural. it's just that that aging has been taken off your face basically recently oh. we had this um there's a lady in the united states you know a very popular person and um is often in the news and we just saw her go to remove all the fillers she removed from her face, her body, because she felt it was not in her best interest. Is there a time where you say, I shouldn't do this, or I've done too much of this? Or what, how do you even get into this process, something you have not done before? You know, how should you indoctrinate the body into doing stuff like what you're describing now? Is this something okay. everyone ought to do at a certain age? Okay, so at a certain age, yes, you ought to do it. If you're very particular about your look. Mm. And the thing is abuse. When you start abusing this, it's, you, know, you start um, getting some of this unfavorable outcome when you do the procedure. Like I said, people tend to, when you start doing it and you discover that you're looking just too much, you're looking so beautiful and younger and all of that, the ability to get addicted to it is very high. Yeah. And that's when you start feeling and then you start Indeed. using Botox. You, at every point in time, you just want to feel and use the Botox at every point in time. It shouldn't be so. So the thing has an expiring period, right? So mm -hmm. if you do a Botox, it should take you at least from four months to six months, you notice that it will start softening. The muscle will start getting active again. If you do a fillers, you start getting, uh, the fillers will start reducing using at maybe nine months to a year plus, you know, depending on the kind of fillers that you use. So when people, most people get scared. So when once they're in the app, maybe fifth month or sixth month of fillers, they want to feel again, they want to feel again, they want to feel again. And that's where the problem comes in. So we just feel that you have to take it, it has to be very minimal. You don't have to go overboard with this, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing with Botox, because when you do anything that you abuse, that definitely you discover that is a negative yeah, yeah. outcome to it. Okay. Um, very interesting conversation. I know that um, in times past, we thought it was just women who wanted to look good. But we're seeing men now in their 50s, in their 40s, even in their 30s, making a decision to say, I know it can be better than this, and I'm determined to do whatever it takes, in a healthy way, that is. Because if at the end of the day we don't in a healthy way, then we lose the entire essence of um, aging gracefully. Well, Koho has been doing something to lend his voice to this conversation. And I did, I did know he was talking about exercise, Tai Chi, is it Taekwondo, is it, you know, a lot of things. But exercise basically, and Koho has tagged this one, mind and body practices with regards to aging. Koho, what did you find? In a world where time seems to rush by, there is a timeless secret to preserving our youth. Welcome to Ageless Vitality, the power of mindful movement. Aging is inevitable, but its pace is not. Our journey begins by exploring the ancient practices of yoga and tai chi, revered for centuries as the fountain of youth. If you do yoga regularly, emphasis on the word regularly with of course some other strengthening exercises what happens is that it's you know the um it helps to kick on what we we'll call the um 
stay young hormones in your body and that helps to slow down the aging process. Exercise alone is powerful, but when paired with mindfulness, it becomes transformative. Meet those who have harnessed this union to unlock their full potential. If you do yoga, of course combined with other strength exercises, you will um, enjoy the benefits of slowing down the aging process. And some of those benefits include um, increased mobility, flexibility, cognitive, uh, reduced risk of cognitive decline, and um, as we grow older, you know that the skin is like a drape. It becomes kind of like baggy. <laughs> so when you do yoga, you will strengthen those muscles. You will give more density to your bones. But how can you embrace this path? Learn how to start your journey towards ageless vitality. Looking at Tai Chi and yoga, it can help replenish the body at the same time through the breathing exercise. Now, how do you breathe? For example, I'm going to give a short demonstration on patting the wild horse mane, the topic from Tai Chi. From here, I stand up in the base. I take a deep breath. Then when I raise my hand, I form a ball. These are easy for you to practice at home. You take a deep breath. Are you ready? Now, you start with the right side because we are parting from here. When you breathe, you hold it first and come back here. Now my leg is here. When I go, I drop my heel. But if you cannot, you don't, you have arthritis, you mustn't raise it. You can walk here like this with your hand this way. Because I am talking, so I can perfectly hold my breath. Now I'm going to hold my breath. Now I pat the wild horse. This person encourage your focus. You're looking at this hand. I sit backward and turn here. So this engage all your joints, replenishing all the oil that dried. Most of the time, the, the oil dried and they are making noise. All right. When you do this, each side, do it eight times before you go to work or in the office. When you look tired, that wider your body. So replenish it with Tai Chi. So they rejuvenate, they make whole, they bring you back to life. How can one cope with anti-aging? Peter Yopo from Joss. Okay, so another one says, um, I am Mrs. Shaba from Zaria. How long can we use supplements? I am over 60. Our guest is still in the house. So mm. this question you need to answer. How long can we use supplements? Mrs. Shaba is over 60 and she wants to know. Okay, so um, as far as she's alive, she can use supplements. Oh, nice. So now, um, it's very important that um, people have that habit of just going to pharmacies and buying supplements is wrong. 
you need to meet a professional. They need to mm. check you out and know the supplements that will be right for you and what you're taking the supplements for. There are different supplements for different purposes. Okay. So because we say you need vitamins, because we say we, you need minerals, doesn't mean you just go into pharmacies and pack supplements. A future beckons from Sokoto, talking about the sun. There's an amount of sun that is healthy, but can sun be too much at some point in your life? We'll learn more from this feature. Sun ray, the light that helps in growth and development of all its benefits, has other sides. Even we, the, the middle ages, we usually sometimes see rushes, despite the cleanliness, despite the too much pap. The amount of sun that is, sun exposure that is harmful, is the one that is able to cause what you call erythema on the skin that is, uh, begins to burn the skin. As one ages, so also his body parts, especially the skin, making him vulnerable to sun exposure. Uh, the non-protected skin, uh, when he's exposed to the sun's rays, the aging process becomes accelerated. So there's need for, uh, 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 I mean, some level of sun protection because one, it, it ages and then there are other also um, a, quite a number of skin diseases that are associated with exposure to, to the sun. Sun ray exposure for many is inevitable in order to earn livelihood. Certain classes of food protect against harmful sun ray. Fruits and vegetables belong to such category. We fortified our fluid with glucose. Mrs. Eno works Sugar. to provide expert dietary advice. We take a watermelon, even our tomato, our vegetables in general. Everyone, all this, some are good at um, fighting against free radicals, like the vegetables. The fruits are rich in antioxidants, and these antioxidants help fight against free radicals. Now, for example, the green tea. When we take green tea, especially as one is aging, this green tea contains flavonoids. This flavonoid helps prevent the effects from the UV rail. Abdul Ghaniu Salau is fit in his late 70s, which he attributed to certain lifestyle which he encourages as a professional counsellor. In this part of the country, we know we have excessive sunlight. But as we are growing old, traditionally, we used to go out. Age people, when they are going out, they go with umbrella. And wherever they are going to sit, they will not expose themselves to the ray of sun. We have trees all about, which is natural thing for not being burnt by sun. So anytime you are going, if you are going out in the sun, hold your umbrella if you are going to trek. And then by the time you find yourself in a place, sit down under the shade of the tree. That will prevent you from being burnt. From very fairest to the darkest, there are various skin colors and they react differently to sun exposure. Across this range of different skin types, mm. their exposure, the harmful effect of sun mm. differs from one class to the other. For instance, somebody who is in class six gets easily uh, burns with minimal amount of sun exposure. Since people react differently to harmful impact of sun ray, proper consultation to determine how much of it your skin type requires is good for a healthy lifestyle.
interesting, you know. Sunlight is good up to a point, and then if you overdo it, it has a negative impact on our skin. And by association, our total health and well-being. Let's welcome Dr. Susan Adams, Harvard-trained lifestyle medicine expert and the director of health and wellness services. Thank you. In a great place in Nigeria, in a great place right now. Of course. We can deal. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Patients, so, you have some things to yes, share. Yes, Christians, women, are, <laughs> Christians are just coming in from all over. Sure, yeah. no men there. Uh, well, I would, well, <laughs> not yet. Them, well, <laughs> let's see. Some of them are asking their wife to text to send the questions for <laughs> time. You know how these <laughs> men do. Okay. <laughs> Somebody say I have pimples all over my face and rashes, all over my body. It's making me look old. What can I do? Okay. Um, so for pimples, you, most of uh, what I've seen in Nigeria is that we attack pimples and skin diseases from the outside. Truly, it could just be from inside. So for example, um, if you see a doctor, some of them prescribe uh, um, antibiotics long term, like maybe doxycycline for like 30 to 60 days is allowed to actually kill it from the inside. It's not always on the outside. Then secondly, um, a lot of people are allergic to things like sugar. They're drinking co um, you know, soft drinks. Um, eating all kinds of things and then they get their body internally inflamed and the result is that it's going to show on your face. What should we eat more? What should we reduce to ensure that our cells are being rejuvenated every day? Okay. Well, we are not eating wrong. Nigerian diet is actually generally healthy. But the truth of the matter is that it's how we process the food and mm -hmm. what we eat more of. I don't know if you understand. Yes, yes, so yes, yes. we don't do balanced diet. The body needs a certain amount of... Okay, so the way I teach uh, my clients and patients is that every medicine that you need is in a plant, fruit, vegetable. It's all around you. Mm. So if you get it in as raw form as possible, you will maximize how much nutrient you get into your system. So I think that if you just want to do the simplest thing, just go more raw. Anyhow, mm. you will at least, like I tell people, if you didn't eat a living food a day, you didn't live that day. Interesting. Oh yes. Yes. Wow. A living food. A living food. So live food gives life and dead food gives what? Okay. You said wow. it. Okay. No, we didn't okay. say, so it. say it. <laughs> so I said living food. Yes. Like vegetables. Vegetable. Food fruits. with life. What about fruits? Fruits, vegetable. Things that don't have interference directly from God. S yes. So this is an orange. This is as God intended to get into your body. Mm. This is a tomato. This is okra. People drink raw okra. It decreases sugar, gets rid of it's nasty. Yes. Ah. I saw <laughs> you say that. Wow. But, but the point is that so when we get our Nigerian food, is a processing. We add Maggi, we overcook. We add, add plenty, of, plenty oil. of oil, so we actually decrease the nutrients. So the food is healthy, but it's just the way we Prepar process. Preparation should preparation. also be key. Yes. And um, we're still talking about food preparation, wow. nutrients, diet, relaxation, rest, and the place it plays in our overall body system, and then the final outcomes. But um, we're going to Ibadan now, talk about supplements and anti-aging nutrients. When we return, Dr. Susan Adams will continue to lend her expert advice to our discuss. Life is in stages. These developmental stages in human beings show that as man grows within his environment, he becomes older due to degeneration of his physiological functions necessary for survival and well-being. Well, when the spermatozoa and the eggs of the woman come together, so from that time, when you talk about conception, that is the beginning of aging. And how do you know that is the beginning of aging? Is that if you have a baby born today, the question anybody will hold, and you are not aware, you say, ah, look at this baby, it's big. How old is he? Even a day old. So why not how young is he? So when you are talking about aging, starting from conception. It's surprising. When one notices that people born about the same time most times tend to have different processes of natural changes in their looks and physical makeup making some to look much older than their peers and age mates. What makes one age faster and what are the signs that are most noticeable 
when one is aging. The factor that can make somebody to grow older than his or her age, you understand? You can't take it from the top. You have to look at the foundation. What happened at the conception? You understand? We have to look at that. Is the woman, the pregnant, the woman that carried the pregnancy, is she of age? If it's a teenager that carry pregnancy, you know what the effect will be. Now, suppose the person is of, of age, you understand, and carry pregnancy, you understand, what is the nutritional status of the woman before conception? What is the nutritional status of the woman during the conception? What is the nutritional status of the woman after conception? All those are factors, you understand, and what are the care given? Are the baby able to, you know, observe all the immunization given accordingly that can help to fight all this infection here and there? You understand? Those are the factor, the basic factor. Health care. If somebody is now okay, somebody is sick now, who have access to the hospital, they can really assess and take proper care. And somebody has to go through the other way. Maybe they are taking compulsion or abs that are even destroying the organs, and they are of the same age. You can't expect them to, to get older at the same age. You understand? Then the environmental factor is another fact. Where are you exposed to and the kind of the nurture and care you receive differs a lot. You think of everything that you are not even supposed to think about. And they are part of the psychological problem that normally promote accelerated aging. Symptoms of aging, what we see most is the wrinkles and the lines that appear on the skin or also the cognitive function where the bones inability to work well which has to do with the loss of bone mass loss of muscle mass and also skin damage looking good and young as one grows older demands extra efforts from whoever cares these extra cares neutralize the aging process that damages the genetic cells and tissues that accumulates with age which cannot be repaired by the body the supplements that will take helps to fight radicals omega-3 fatty acid which is found in fish contains VHA and which helps to hydrate the skin it helps to keep the skin, it helps the elasticity of the, of the skin, it helps the smoothness of the skin, it's also an anti, it also has an antioxidant property. So another supplement is glutathione, which is a very, very powerful antioxidant. Number one, it helps to generate vitamin C and vitamin E. Vitamin C and E are well-known antioxidants that people use this, females use this, it helps their skin to glow, but it helps to the time is also present in the body that has three amino amino acid the cysteine the glycine also the glutamic acid so it helps to fight infections it helps to fight germs it also helps to prevent cell damage in the body but most of these um supplements too are also present in fruits so that, that we cannot do away with fruits the issue of stress like i make mention of must be properly taken care of. Adequate sleep. Adequate sleep is talking about there is that at least. <laughs> Observe your sleeping hour, six to eight hour, if possible. But what matter most and what most people do is that when you begin to be sleeping after 12 a.m., it's not ideal for the body. You must be able to eat at the right time and at the right place and at the, the right quantity with the right amount. And we must be physically active, most especially in the atmospheric, where the, 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 the you know, open air, where you have enough atmospheric air that you can breathe in, breathe out, you know, fresh, unpolluted air, and there, take our exercise. What man becomes and how he lives lies in his hands. It is very important for individuals to take notes and adhere strictly to the advice on good nutrition, healthy lifestyle, and diet, as this can help slow down the aging process and also help individuals age gracefully. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it is We Can Deal coming to you from the network service of the NTA and it's all about slowing down the biological clock. And our guest 
is with us. She's still with us. She told us about own, uh, which is oxygen, water, and nutrition. And there's an RA. Rest. How important is rest? Oh, wow. Um, rest, when I hear rest, <laughs> another way to spell rest is repair. Because if you don't rest, you cannot repair the cells to be able to function well tomorrow. Mm. Um, in the U.S., if after going three consecutive days with less than three hours of sleep, you're equivalent to a legally drunk person. Hmm. So, yes. So you're legally drunk because you can't think well. You can't you be coherent. Walk, you can't. We go to educational television in Lagos where there's talk about social connections, relationships and the impact on aging, which is the thrust of this conversation. Tick tock, the clock ticks on and never stops, even towards the journey all humans share, the journey of aging. Human beings are social creatures with the need for connections that enables the quest for survival and to thrive. Nonetheless, Many persons are often vulnerable to isolation and feelings of loneliness as the age. I have to socialize so that I keep my life going, I keep my, my body and soul going. I socialize every day. I socialize with my community, with my family, with the church. With friends, friends, home and abroad. In the evenings, you sit down with your friends, you know, share drinks, share pepper soup, whatever comes that you can share. If you don't socialize, you are killing yourself gradually because loneliness is not good. Loneliness can lead to depression. The profound impact of social interactions on the mental and emotional well-being of humans as the age can never be overemphasized as they play a vital role in tackling the challenges of aging. It has to do uh, with the all kinds of uh, association, uh, number of persons that surrounds uh, the elderly person, especially in their later life, in their old age. For example, their immediate family members, uh, their friends, and the community, you know, where they find themselves. Social interactions like engaging in conversations, laughter and games can stimulate the brain, keep a cognitive decline at bay, while despairing feelings of loneliness, improved health, boost one's mood, enhance feelings of self-worth and purpose. Encourage them to not only to be seen in the society, but to contribute, you know, the, the value that they have got over the years. You know, we should, not, we should encourage them maybe in community meetings. We should encourage them to be part of a, maybe different association and community programs. These days that we have uh, online communities, like maybe their are, are old past. Like if I use my dad, for example, he's still connected I mean, to his friends when he was working. He's still connected to his friends, you know, when uh, he's in uh, university days. So they, they still have a way that they meet. So we can use some of these uh, online and offline uh, communities through friends, through associates and through workplaces, you know, to and, I mean, to nurture this social connectedness. Aside bridging the gap between generations, social interactions breed a lifeline for some people to even be physically active as they age. It will contribute a lot to their quality of life. You know, when, we, when, when they have a lot of people around them, you know, engaging them, you know, to do what they ordinarily may not be able to do on their, I mean, for themselves as a result of old age. So, if we engage them, you know, socially we have interactions, maybe coming from neighbors, coming from friends, and sometimes maybe we can put together different programs, you know, that we get them to be, you know, I mean, interacting uh, at every point in time so that they, they don't suffer uh, depression, they don't suffer uh, loneliness or isolation. In some Social interactions form the threads that weave together one's emotional and mental well-being as he or she age, be it through friendships, family or intergenerational connections. Nurturing these kinds of relationships can significantly impact one's overall quality of life in fulfilled grace, happiness and purpose 
even at one's journey through the later years of life. Welcome back. Our guest is in the house and ready to tell us more. During the break, we talked about longevity in Nigeria, the age expectancy in Nigeria. Please talk more about that. You said some things that broke my heart. Oh, so, yeah, I was heartbroken. I I'm mean, sorry. Yeah. I'm not trying to break the heart. <laughs> the truth is that I feel that um, Japan, for example, they were deliberate about longevity. Today, the average Japanese lives in the 90s, averagely, mm. 80s to 90s. That's the average life expectancy. In Nigeria, our average life expectancy is still between the late 40s and early 50s. So if you're above 50, you've done very well in Nigeria. Mm. Average, it's there, the <coughs> ministry sad. of health knows this. Tell us about that colon you call the garbage can. That's the first time I'm hearing it <sighs> being so <sighs> described. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, earlier we talked about detoxification yes. and how we can deliberately detox. So the detox is, is just what we do, but detox can be done professionally. And this one, we literally, you can go through the rectum and flush your system with water. It's like flushing your garbage can. Because your colon really is where all the garbage collects and then you defecate, right? So if you keep pouring out your garbage can and you don't uh, rinse it, hmm. you know, it's dirty after a while and you see if you see your baby if you those of us that have children you see the poop no matter how tiny they are, the poop is so big mm. long mm. but you know adults they go to toilet every other day one small thing will come like that is because the colon is totally messed up okay. so rinsing your garbage can actually um, improves your health how one when you use a suppository like a drug like a diclofenac suppository. Mm, mm. You know you can reduce fever just mm. by sticking yeah, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what makes you think that when your colon is that dirty, you're not sipping in toxins slowly and keeping yourself in a very low grade inflammatory state that will further cause diseases. Okay. So this is why even if you cannot get to do the professional one called colonic hydrotherapy, it's done everywhere in the world, okay. colonic hydrotherapy. That's why I preach, start at home and do water fasting deliberately. Be intentional. Be intentional. Wow. So, yes, yeah, so pay attention to your colon. If you have a good GI health, in fact, you have the best of health. Okay. Your immune system, absorption of nutrition, okay. water, everything okay. is controlled here. Okay. Yeah. We, need to, we need to wrap it up here. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. wow. The colon, I don't talk about often. Colon is Garbage big. can? Wow. <laughs> lots more, lots more. The re-owned therapy. Yeah. I'm taking that message to the world. Please Everywhere start. I go today, I'll be talking about it. We need to thank you, Dr. Susan Adams, Harvard Trade Lifestyle Medicine Expert and Director of Health and Wellness Services and all good things pertaining to health and well-being. Yeah. We thank God for You've the passion. Yeah. 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 And remarkable. I thank you so much for doing this show. It's going to help a lot. Thank oh, you thank so you. much. Thank you. thank you. We've had a great time with a you. Time, yeah. Keep learning. See you again bright and early tomorrow morning. Goodbye and God bless Bye. Nigeria. Bye. Bye.